So a few weeks ago, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Well, less playing and more waiting for my opponent to make their turn as I scrolled to Twitter, waiting for my one turn death. Needless to say, I was feeling powerless and frustrated. So I wanted to be in control and play a good power fantasy game. I started off with Skyrim, but in all honesty, I wasn't feeling it. I needed something new, something fresh. That's when I found it, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. It was everything I never knew I needed. It had cyborgs, a killer soundtrack, and story events so over the top I feel like I could kill a god afterwards. This game blew my mind and changed my outlook on the Metal Gear Solid series. So let me tell you about the game that I fell in love with. This is the chaotic plot of Metal Gear Rising. Before I go any further, I do want to say that this is the only Metal Gear game that I've played other than like 5 minutes of Metal Gear 5. Now then, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into this. So the game starts out with Raiden and a few of his associates in a car as they move through an African country with its Prime Minister. Looks so safe. Nothing could ever go. Oh. Oh, that's brutal. <clears throat> well, the convoy gets attacked and the Prime Minister kidnapped. And after one of the best opening boss fights I've ever seen, we arrive at a train. Now, before I go forward, I want to talk about this boss. It's insane. It's a Metal Gear that has a plasma laser and rockets and riding cuts it in half. How much more badass can you want in an opening boss? Sorry. Anyways, Raiden catches up to the train in the sickest way possible. I mean, come on, look at that. It's so cool. Anyways, right when he's about to get to the Prime Minister, some Brazilian asshole named Jetstream Sam gets in his way. And Edward Scissorhand stabs the Prime Minister in the chest. A fight breaks out because, of course it does, and this fight, well, it... It doesn't end well for Raiden. It costs him an arm and a leg. Or, well, I... Moving on. Jetstream Sam darts off and Boris... God, I love you, Boris. <clears throat> anyway, Boris saves Raiden. After an undisclosed amount of time, Raiden is flying into a new country to stop cyborg terrorists. Oh, and he got a new arm along with some upgrades. The main upgrade being his new blade mode where he can cut an enemy just right and take away their electrolytes and absorb them, giving them his health and focus back. And this... Oh, okay, it's brutal. Anyways, after killing cyborgs and weird cyborg dogs along with helping the local population, you meet Blade Wolf. This is the first true boss fight in the game. He forces you to learn to parry or suffer. Now, the fight is fun with Wolf talking about how he's an AI who's incredibly smart and can't be beaten. He even says that a savvy soldier uses all of his resources before calling him back up. This is a great fight which ends in his death, but Raiden saves his memories and some of the parts for later. After that, Raiden moves on into the old city and after killing more cyborgs and weird things, God, these things are creepy. He ends up face to face with a French lady and a weird backpack? We learn that her name is Minstrel. She grew up fighting and killing her enemies just like Raiden. And after they don't see eye to eye, they end up fighting. This probably is the most tame of the boss fights in the game, but it's still so much fun. Except for these little fuckers! <sighs> Anyways, you eventually freeze her and dice her to bits before she confesses how she finally lost and says some stuff in French which I think means I love you. Anyways, the guy you're here for says something and then blows himself up. What a coward. Now then, it's off to Mexico because there's something about tests and the bad guys helping the terrorists, so Raiden is going to go put a stop to it. After a quick introduction to a new enemy, Raiden jumps down a tube Mario style and meets a kid named George. I have no idea what this character is supposed to be. After killing a few robots, George informs Raiden that he had escaped from a facility that Raiden just so happened to be looking for. Huh, that was convenient. Anyways, after killing fire-breathing robot mosquitoes and some cyborgs, he infiltrates a hidden base and cuts his way through, leading to this horror of a cutscene. This is just gross. Then Raiden hijacks the robot, and we get this joke that is still relevant somehow. 
after downloading the data, Doctor tells us there is a video that has an investor of the facility. This is important for later. After that, Raiden fights a cyborg tank and pushes forward before coming into a room. And after a shitty Mexican standoff, he kills the man in charge of the facility. Then, it's off to Denver, baby! After a quick road trip, Raiden goes to Denver, where he's attacked by the cops because fuck you and your free will. They trash his car and halt him from pushing any further to the World Marshal building, because that's where the bad guys are, along with the kids that are being trained to become killers. So, that's a thing. After killing cops, running through buildings and jumping across rooftops, Raiden jumps down an elevator shaft and runs around in the dark before popping out in the sun. Here comes the sun. Raiden kills a few more cyborgs before Sam turns into a fucking digital god who makes Raiden question his own methods of killing and morality. This stuns him and forces him to walk slowly to the World Marshal building. This is where we meet Monsoon, a terrorist who loves philosophy and making parallels that don't make any sense. After insulting Raiden, he gets all mad and reverts back to his sadistic ways, becoming Jack the Ripper. Monsoon then forces his men to die, even though one was petting a fucking cat not three minutes prior. Then, Monsoon gets folded by Jack and proceeds into the World Marshal building. There's not really much to say about this level, Jack fights his way up the floors before running vertically into a Japanese type area, and then to the server room where all the brains are being held. After another monologue, Raiden fights Mr. Snippy and kills him. Before he dies, he says something that's happening in three hours. After a surprisingly short call, the team figures out what they are planning to do is assassinate the president on Pakistan soil so that the war economy will boom again and they can stay in power. So Raiden runs away from Denver to go to his space Uber, but along the way he gets stopped by Sam. They monologue about how different they are, but are really more different than... It's a whole mess. But eventually they fight. Raiden kills Sam, and Wolf takes the sword because... reasons. They catch their space Uber and make it to Pakistan on time. Raiden fights through a military base and confronts Senator Armstrong, who is piloting a big fucking Metal Gear. Raiden, of course, beats the fuck out of its arms and legs, making it trip, and then slices it up, forcing Armstrong to come out. Oh yeah, also Armstrong like told the press that Raiden was slaughtering the military base he's in. I, I, I don't know when he had time to do that. Anyways, Raiden and Armstrong fight. Correction, Raiden gets his ass whooped as he can't do anything to Armstrong. And this is when we find out why Armstrong is doing all this. He is using war to get himself elected as president, and Raiden is the last person in his way to make that a reality. So, he slams Raiden into the metal so hard it explodes. Then Wolf, who is somehow alive, monologues and gives Raiden Sam's sword because Armstrong broke his old one. Then, the final battle ensues. Armstrong with his nanomachines versus Raiden and his new fancy frequency blade. Well, Raiden rips out Armstrong's heart and resets the status quo for now. Raiden lays his old job for good so that he can take down more Matrix companies like he did with World Marshal, and the kids get to decide what they want to do with their lives now that they're no longer being trained to kill. And that's the chaotic plot of Metal Gear Rising. A few things I want to say before the video ends is that I love this game. The soundtrack is amazing. And has so much replayability to it. You can run a new game plus so long as play at Sam and Wolf in their own little mini stories. This game is great and if you haven't played it, please do. You will not regret it. Between the multiple bosses and the fluidity of combat and getting new combos, it's just all wrapped up into a almost perfect package. There are a few hiccups every now and then, like when you have to slice up indoors, it just doesn't work some of the time and so you get caught on nothing sometimes enemies after you defeat them don't lose a collision until way too late causing you to get hit by it it's it's an old game so it has some flaws and mess to it but it's that charming kind of mess that mess that like you can't be too upset for it because they did their best 
anyway i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please do not forget to like and subscribe and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one i hope you have a great day